It's the fall 2006, five years after the towers came down. How could you let this happen? And how could you let this happen? How could you have created this? George W. Bush. How stupid are you to choose this destiny? Where's Osama bin Laden? Where are the weapons of mass destruction? How much is the life of an American worth? Are we better today than we were five years ago today? They smelling burnt flesh, they seeing bodies every single day, all day, every day. And the human mind is only capable of handling so much information before it actually begins to break down. It's going it was a, it will replace a building, but you can't replace life, man. You know what I'm saying? What you saw on TV is not There's no comparison. You can't you can't fathom what you saw on TV to what you see in person. Yeah. It's a little. It takes a tragedy for us to you know really get that feeling of helping one another. That's that's sad. What they don't tell you is how bad the scene was at that time. At the time of the second plane hit. It's a little, it takes a tragedy for us to, you know, really get that feeling of helping one another. That's, that's sad. We're in New York City. What's that? This. This is what I'm doing in New York. It's important to show we got to go on with our lives. We got to keep doing it. All the perspectives that anybody else has of what this is, is coming from TV. It's coming from the media. But I'm standing in it right now, and it looks like downtown San Diego or LA. Sometime in the next day or two, I'm going over to the NLP Center in Manhattan. Last week, when I went into the Red Cross to find out what, what the relief efforts were like, they were telling me the emphasis on how their counselors tremendously needed to relief themselves. There's a, gonna be ripple effects for a long time, but no matter, even if they're as bad as we're hoping they're not, still most people have to go back on with life. So, that's what we're returning to. Okay, now we're under Madison Square Garden. I haven't looked from Boris since. Can I go in there? No Boris, is he here? Boris? Oh my god. Yeah, I haven't looked. See all the place where you just see sky and clouds? That's where they were. And then the place where you see buildings kind of behind them and that's around, around them. That's around. That's where the that's bottom was. Oh my god. This is where you said you were and you ran down yeah, and left? this is basically where we were when it happened. Jesus. Were you watching when it happened? When I came, actually. The times of the field building already collapsed. Oh my God! I, I didn't so you came in a little I bit came, late. Just looking to the window. Do you didn't hear the people crying? The people were already <laughs> crying here. Oh, that was on 28. I was small I myself. Was, I was in the About 20th. to cry. So. Well, no, I, I was on the. I mean, you, you already like when you arrived at that time. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. I just came. Out. Mm -hmm. You they just came into the, the window. I saw you the fire. Until you and they were both gone at that point. No, one of just just one, just the first one, and then you saw. The one was on the fire. You wrote to me about that. Yeah, that, that they had thrown us out and it was a makeshift morgue and they said you have to get out, we're bringing bodies here. They said keep so going. Just so where? We didn't know. So was, just don't get one of them. What happened was uh, when this whole thing happened, Jesse had to go and, uh, and he and his wife Amy both made it down. We evacuated, there was no train to take, so you know, where do we go? And, and they don't know what's going on, so they're just going and going and going and, and at the park where they were staying, it was a makeshift morgue that they were making. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, so they threw us out and uh, we eventually went downtown to our friend's house. <sighs> I 
this is the first day that he's been away from um, ground zero. He's been there pulling rubble every single day. I have to talk to the police officer right now. You can call me. I'll talk to you soon. I love you. Bye-bye. There's a bomb scare. Thursday. So I think they're getting the students definitely a buzzing. They're letting them back in. Two friends? Is yeah, that two friends. Visiting? Visitor, yeah. My friend too. My friend he is he lost his family too. Like two three from his his family. They came here for this. What happened? What what what's happened if you don't leave it? Nobody would believe that, that this thing is gonna happen. You don't know how much it's gonna happen. Yeah. A lot of things do. A lot of things do. But it really it put it back into context that you know today's events. It seemed unreal. People wanted it to be unreal, but no, it was real. And that's what's just you know sinking in for a lot of people now. You know, it's you're not going to wake up from this. It's you know you got to go on, but it's, you're not going to wake up from this. When will there be justice for the murder, for the genocide? We are not safer, it costs more to live, and birth-given rights continue to be taken away. This will not go away, and it will not get any better until you make it go away. End it today. I'm Enrique Montiel. Since September 2001, I have been a passionate advocate against the crisis we have put ourselves in and the hole we continue to dig ourselves in every single day. I invite you to be a part of the solution by entering this conversation. Request to create your own personal piece of 911 for our festival using the footage I shot in New York in 2001, and you can mix it with any footage that you have available that you have shot yourself or have rights to. This is an ongoing conversation on our rights, on our future, on the world we're involved in shaping. Best to you and to your loved ones.